How's it going, Peninsula Student Ministries? It has been a crazy past couple of weeks. Probably the pinnacle being uh, just earlier this week, the governor of Virginia declaring that all the school systems were going to be closed for the remainder of the school year. And so Chelsea and I were just talking about how insane that is. Uh, and we wanted to reach out to you uh, with this uh, video uh, to give you some encouragement, uh, but also some practical advice uh, on things that you can be doing and opportunities that are going to be available to you to continue growing in your relationship with God during this time. And so as Chelsea and I were reflecting on this, one of the things that really struck us was it has been not just a crazy past couple of weeks for our students, but it's really been an insane year uh, for us and a, a very difficult year, if we're being completely honest. Uh, starting in October, uh, tragedy struck our community uh, when three students from Tab High School um, lost their lives. Um, and that was something that was very hard for our students and uh, something that we're still continuing to talk with students about uh, and process that tragedy with them. And then just a couple of months ago, uh, our Grafton students were completely displaced from their school uh, because of the fire uh, and that disrupted uh, learning that was taking place at Tab Middle also and York High. And now we're in this season where we've got this virus that has uh, disrupted all of our learning schedules um, and uh, the ability of us to be able uh, to meet together. And so what we wanted to do was we just wanted to take a moment um, to acknowledge the seriousness of this, uh, to acknowledge uh, how difficult this is for you. And one of the things that Chelsea and I were talking about was we don't really have a context for this in our own lives. I was sharing with Chelsea that when I was in high school, uh, the Columbine shooting happened. Um, and uh, I grew up in Virginia, that happened in Colorado, and so it didn't directly impact our community, but it kind of sent a shockwave uh, throughout all the school systems in America uh, with just something as horrific as a school shooting taking place. Uh, and Chelsea was talking about uh, her remembering being in school uh, on September 11th uh, and what that did to disrupt learning uh, for a while. But we haven't experienced anything like this where things are pretty much shutting down or completely transitioning to digital uh, for the next couple of months for you students. And so we know that this means that uh, our seniors are going to miss out on their proms and that breaks our hearts. Uh, it's hard for us to think about not being able to go to some of your high school graduations uh, or just that those graduations are going to look differently. We realize a lot of our students uh, are athletes and they've lost their spring season. Uh, we have students that participate in robotics and that's been put on hold and they're not going to be building and competing uh, in, in that competition. And there's just so many other things. Uh, our students that are in drama uh, won't be doing their plays this spring. And so this is a really hard time and we want you to know that it's okay for this to feel like a hard time. We don't want you to think that when you face trials in your life that you're just supposed to say, Oh, everything's you know just going to be fine, and uh, I can't admit that I'm I'm a little miserable miserable right now, and so it's okay for you to feel um, disrupted during this time. It's okay for you to feel like things are not right, things are not the way that they're supposed to be, because you are facing a lot of change. So one of the things that we wanted to do is to encourage you that even though you're facing a lot of change during this time, there is something that is unchanging. And really what I should say is there is someone who is unchanging. And for us to explore this a little bit, we're going to look at Hebrews 13, verse 8. This is what it says. It says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. And so for us to really understand, what does it mean that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever? For, for this to really affect our lives, for it to impact our lives, we need to take a moment to consider who is Jesus? If this text says that Jesus doesn't change, well, what is it about Jesus that's unchanging that we can take confidence in? And I'm going to stick with the book of Hebrews. If you look at Hebrews chapter 2, this is, this is what it tells us about Jesus. In Hebrews chapter 2, it says, But we see him who for a little while was made lower than the angels, namely Jesus, crowned with glory and honor because of the suffering of death, so that by the grace of God, he might taste death for everyone. You see, Jesus' Jesus's position did change 
before the beginning of time, he was in heaven above the angels, and then 2,000 years ago, he took on humanity and entered earth and became lower than the angels. And he was crucified on a cross for our sins and buried, but rose again on the third day and ascended into heaven. And he now is in a position of glory where he is ruling. And so we can take confidence in this. We can take confidence that this same Jesus has a position that never changes. He doesn't change. He is the same loving Savior who spoke Lazarus out of the tomb. Remember the story of Lazarus? He was dead in the tomb and Jesus told him to get up and rise and he did and he came back to life. And this is what Jesus does to us. If you've put your faith and trust in Jesus, He has spoken and you have come to life. And we can take confidence in this PSM because it's the same Jesus that came to earth, lived the perfect life that we couldn't live, the same Jesus that was beaten and hung on a cross for our sins and rose again on the third day. This is the same Jesus that is crowned with glory and honor, and he is reigning with God at this exact time. Jesus is still on his throne, even though your world has been flipped upside down. So take confidence. We want you to know that we have some great resources available for you. We're putting the Sunday School lessons online, the Gospel Project PDFs. We've already had some great Zoom meetings with some of our students, uh, just exploring Jesus more uh, in Bible stories. Um, and if you haven't gotten on that, it's a must. But because we're looking at at least another month of social distancing, at least another 30 days where we're not going to be able to meet with you face to face, which if we're honest, it crushes Chelsea and I. We are huge extroverts uh, and our favorite thing is to be with our students. Uh, and so what we wanted to do, because this social dis distancing is going to take place for a little longer, uh, we wanted to ramp it up a notch. And so in addition to the Gospel Project uh, PDFs that are online, in addition to uh, our weekly Zoom meetings for Bible studies, we're going to try to put out content, some additional content each week, a video like this, uh, where you'll get a longer expanded time of teaching. And uh, we want to hopefully have a co-ed study once a week where we will all be able to discuss things that we've uh, heard about in this video. So take notes. Um, some of the things that Chelsea's going to share with you, uh, and then I'm going to come back and offer you some more encouragement. Because our hope is that next week sometime we will gather together uh, as one united group of students at Peninsula Student Ministries uh, to dig into God's Word together uh, in a Zoom meeting. Now, I just talked about why we should take confidence during this uncertain time. Now, Chelsea is going to talk with us about some very practical things that you can and should be doing now that we've got an official word that you will be finishing your semester uh, through distance education. So what do you got for us, Chelsea? All right. Hi, PSM. We really miss you guys. Um, and so I just want to give you some practical tools and steps on how to use your time wisely at home. Um, but God's word has a lot to say on how we use our time. And so I want to start off by reading Colossians 3, 17, which says, and whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. So my question for you is how are you using this time to glorify the Lord? Um, some practical things that we wanted to share with you guys are things that we have experienced ourselves and also have just been able to talk with you about um, as well. And so one of those being to go to bed at a decent hour. Um, go to bed at a decent hour, treat Monday through Friday like your normal school schedule, set an alarm, wake up, shower, take off your pajamas, get ready for the day. I know Chaps was saying earlier that he wore sweatpants for at least three days in a row and was in a little bit of a funk because of it. And it makes sense, right? It makes sense. We're not used to um, being able to be in our pajamas all day. And so I encourage you guys to you know, treat Monday through Friday like a normal school day. Go ahead and set a schedule, get a routine going on. Um, make sure to, to bathe and cleanse yourself for the day and just be prepared for, for what the day has ahead. We know that you guys have a lot of schoolwork going on too. And so we encourage you, set a schedule for that schoolwork, whether it's starting with two hours and then take a break and go for a walk or take a break and eat lunch. Uh, make sure to give yourself some grace to take those breaks as well. But 
um, yeah, treat nine to five like, like a school day. And then secondly, we just encourage you guys to find a creative way to connect with the Lord. Um, if you're already connecting with the Lord on a regular basis, reading your word, we encourage you to continue doing that. Um, but also just want to encourage you to be creative in what that could look like, whether you um, go outside and go for a prayer walk, or if you are artsy and decide to pick up a paintbrush and paint a verse or reflect and meditate on scripture, if you enjoy creating rap songs, or if you play the violin, uh, create something worshipful for the Lord. And I encourage you guys, as you start thinking about your boredom or as you start speaking that you are bored, to use that as a radar to say, how can I be using this time to creatively connect with the Lord? And then thirdly, we encourage you guys to limit your screen time. We know that a lot of you are using um, Zoom and using your computers for good things such as school and connecting with people. And so we definitely encourage you to continue doing that but also just wanna encourage you to limit how much you're watching Netflix, to limit how much you're scrolling on TikTok or on Instagram. Um, I know we use our screens a lot of time to avoid things that are going on around us and actually studies show that our screen time really does increase our anxiety. So I wanna encourage you guys to limit how much you are using your screen um, and social media. And so Chaps is gonna share a little more about that as well. Yeah, so for final segment, the final thing that we wanted to talk with you about was we wanted to address the reality that in these coming weeks or months that you're going to be living your lives somewhat virtually. Uh, your education is going to be taking place predominantly uh, online through distance education. Uh, your social interactions are going to be dominated more now than ever by a screen. And so we wanted to address how do you as students at Peninsula Student Ministries do this well? And so in order to help us, as always, we love turning to scripture. Mm -hmm. And so uh, to orient this final little bit of time we have with you, I wanna read Hebrews 12 verse one. It says, therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. And so a lot of you have already experienced or indulged in sin related to a virtual world. So what does it look like for you to lay that sin aside and to run with endurance when you are literally being forced to live your lives virtually? in the coming weeks and months. And so I have three points to help us answer this question. Point number one, Chelsea and I want you to be aware of your constant curiosity. See, curiosity is not a bad thing, but indulging your curiosity about sinful things can become a deadly thing. As teenagers, you're at an age where you have a, a heightened sense of curiosity. There's so much in the world that you don't know about and you want to know about it. And so my advice to you is limit what you allow yourself to explore. Instead of spending so much of your time clicking on random links online or wasting time watching YouTube videos uh, posted about things that don't really matter. Um, instead, what we would encourage you to do is indulge your curiosity about things that we know to be true. Primarily that we're sinners in need of a savior and God sent Jesus to die for our sins. So Chelsea and I encourage you, explore that more. We want you to read your Bibles more. We want you to uh, spend more time searching articles online by groups like the Gospel Coalition. Just Google the Gospel Coalition. This is a group that we know and trust. And so we would, advise, we, we would recommend any of their articles that you could read. Um, you could download the app, She Reads Truth. There's a version for guys called He Reads Truth. Um, these are just a, a couple of uh, resources that are out there. Uh, certainly, you should be jumping online uh, and looking at the PDFs every week uh, from student ministries and joining our Zoom uh, Bible study meetings that we're having. And so there's so many good things that you can indulge your curiosity in. And so our first piece of advice to you is spend time indulging in things that we know to be true. Our second bit of advice is 
guard yourself against the uh, world of virtual reality. Now, many of you have friends that you interact with on a regular basis that you haven't even actually met in real life. A lot of you are friends with people uh, on online gaming uh, or just other virtual platforms that are out there where you interact with these people that you don't even really know. Uh, and some of you, that might not be the case, but you follow people uh, on social media uh, that don't have the slightest clue who you are, but you spend hours indulging in what are they posting, what are they talking about, what tweets are they sending out. What if you spent your time instead this season interacting with the leaders that you actually know at Student Ministries and the fellow students that you know at Student Ministries, students that you know love and trust God? What if those online interactions dominated the time that you spent online? You have at least two opportunities a week to get online for meaningful Bible studies with PSM. And so you can get in and dig in deeper. And even though it is a virtual meeting that you're in, it's still a real relationship that you can grow during this time of social distancing. Now, our third and final point for you is probably our most sensitive point when it comes to how to guard yourself when you're going to be living so much of your lives virtually in the coming weeks and months. And our final point is that there is a very real temptation to explore sexually inappropriate content online. You need to remember that your body is not your own. You have been bought with a price, and that price is the blood of Christ. And so we don't want to see you squander the price that Jesus paid for you on temporary pleasures. So we encourage you to resolve to say no to sexual temptation. Why would you set death in front of your eyes when Christ offers you something so much greater that lasts for eternity? And we also want you to consider guarding yourselves about things that you might be pressured to text to a friend or things that you might be tempted to text to a friend. You might not struggle with exploring things sexually online and uh, looking at sexually explicit content, but you may have someone in your life pressuring you to compromise yourselves morally. And so Chelsea and I just wanna say one thing to you in regards to this. It is not worth it. So before you Google that image or before you send that text, Chelsea and I want you to ask this question, does this glorify God? And if it does, then let's do it together. Let's dig into God's word together. And so we can't wait to see you on our Zoom meeting this week. Uh, we can't wait to continue to develop relationships with you and to dig in to the truth of who God is. So we look forward to seeing you online, PSM. Hey chaps, what are you doing? Practicing Super Smash Bros. I don't even know what these buttons do. Jaren came over the other day and my family was playing. <laughs> my wife destroyed him. She beat him like four games in a row. And then he got upset and then he played Noel and Zeke and they beat him too. But I'm trying to practice because I'm not that good at it. Is that what you're wearing to our video? Yeah, I've been wearing pajamas for like two weeks now. You might want to go change. <laughs>